so yeah, I did link. Um, it's the same comic book that I usually print out and leave in the uh, leave around on the tables when we're in person. It also doubles as a coloring book. All right, it's time. I'm going to get started. Um, 12 p.m. local, 10 a.m. in conference time. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, some of you may know me. I'm Chris. I'm the uh, I run the uh, Maker Village and design the badges um, badges for the in-person conference, and then I design projects here to share with y'all when we're virtual. Um, I do want to thank our sponsors, um, INE eLearn Security, um, Anaxis, I guess that's how you pronounce that, and our Platinum and Gold sponsors, MongoDB, Jupyter Networks, Corelight, Google, and Bridge Crew, um, and mostly you guys, because by doing kits, we actually self-sponsored. Um, we covered all of the expenses and and I've got a little money for prototypes for next year. So yay. <laughs> um, and so before we get going, um, I do want to go over some of the tools that you might see in the screen, um, just so that just in case you do want to do more of this, um, get more kits, maybe design your own things, um, things so that you can think about those things. Um, so let's switch over to number two, number three. Okay, so there we go. Oop, wrong button. There we go. All right, so first up, uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, first up, we got a resistor bender. Um, this one I actually inherited. It's actually in Radio Shack Red to give you some idea of how old it is. Um, you can print 3D print these. Um, you can find them online. Um, Basically, there the idea is that you get the nice, perfect U for your resistors, like so. Yay! And then that'll slide into the board much easier. Um, also, your soldering irons. The tips need to be shiny, 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 shiny. Otherwise, nothing will melt. And which brings us to our next tool. Um, as far as heat goes, that's gonna depend on the solder. Um, if you're getting good solder, it should have a temperature range on there for you. Um, Cause it is gonna vary depending on the, the formulation of the solder. Um, but the big thing is that we need to keep the tip shiny, shiny. Um, I like a, a flat wedge tip. Some people like round tips. Um, once again, that's a personal preference thing. Um, that also brings us to our next tool, 
which is this. Um, it's basically it's brass. It's like a brass scrubby pad um, in a little container. Um, I like this. I think um, it's a little easier on the iron than using a wet sponge, although you can use a wet sponge. Some people like a wet sponge. Um, but because the, the tip of the iron loses less heat using this than a wet sponge, I prefer the brass. Plus then if you're carrying it, if you have to carry your kit, you don't have to worry about finding water and dealing with putting a wet sponge someplace when you're done. Um, some of the other tools that you're definitely gonna see or need. Um, Grandpa always called these nippers. Um, they're technically their side cutters or flat cutters because um, the, they're at an angle so that you can get in there and make the back of the board flat. Um, let's see what else we got here. Bender, Sutterick. Okay. Um, another thing you might want to consider for purchase later, if you keep doing this, is some good um, solder wick. Basically, it's fine copper thread with lots and lots of flux in it. So you heat it up, heat it up. It'll take away any excess solder. Um, I do recommend this particular brand, Grootwick. Um, it's made in Japan and it's just awesome. <laughs> Let's see, we talked about that, we talked about that. Um, this may have come in your kits if you were, if you were, uh, if you bought one of the kits that I recommended, it's a solder sucker. You basically, you push down the plunger and then push the button and it creates a small short-lived vacuum and as you can see maybe and see how it left a little mark on my finger even um, so that's a solder sucker and i'll show you how to use that when we get started um, other tools you might see um, are tweezers they're nice to have when you get tweezers um, make sure they you get the ESD kind. This isn't really so much a paint as it is a coating. If I were to shuffle across the carpet, grab one of these and then grab one of these and then grab a component, any static electricity that I picked up is not gonna be transferred to the part. And um, I got these with the big round tip. They're good for <laughs> um, cats. Generally, we'll stay away once you start soldering um, along with other pets because it kind of smells. So they should be all right. Um, and we're not working with anything overly sensitive here. Um, if we were doing, you know, things that were a little more sensitive, then I would say, yeah, it might be a, a good idea to shoo the cat out of the room. But cats are going to cat, so it doesn't matter. Um, so... Round, so I got a one. I got a ones here with a big round tip. Those are good for through hole. Um, another example here. Um, these are really tiny. Better for um, better for uh, surface mount components. Um, these are some cheap ones that came in a kit. I kind of would stay away from these if you can. Um, because they are not coated, they are going to, any static discharge on your body is going to be transferred to your work. Um, and finally, two things. Um, I have really bad eyesight, so these are always a good idea. Um, these are, I call them cheaters. Um, they're, they're going, um, it's basically, it's a magnifier that clips onto my regular progressive lenses. Um, and then finally, the last tool, this is entirely optional, but it's a really good idea eventually to get one of these. And that is our friend, the multimeter. Let's see if I can get her in frame here. That or um, This is a Fluke 101. Um, you don't need to go this expensive. Um, a $10, $15 model is just fine. Um, I just decided to spend some of my stimulus money and treat myself. Um, so the, th and the three things that you're going to do the most with any multimeter are, um, first, what is this resistor? So if you take one of your resistors 
and take the little probies and you find out that it's reading 11.2 that's within tolerance it's supposed to be a 10 ohm resistor um, the other handy thing that you can do with a multimeter is check diodes so like i've got this diode here that i pulled out of a breadboard and now say i want to use it for something else well which side is which i don't know so there again oops not that way let's try this way and if we get a little bit of glow maybe yeah we do get a little bit of glow so now i know that this side here is the positive and this is the negative and it really becomes important later on to have these features because um, as you grow and get into more advanced things, that little dot there is actually a resistor. And this little dot here on your screen is actually an LED. It's surface mount. I do believe it's an 805 package. They come much smaller. But there again, this trying to figure out which side is which, much easier to do with a multimeter. And then finally, the last thing that you definitely would want a multimeter for is, I don't know if you can hear this, it's playing a tone because I've touched the probes together. So basically, if you have a board and you're trying to figure out where something goes or what it's doing. We go say into here and I'm cheating a little because, oh, you can't see, just a second. And I'm cheating a little because I know where these kind of go. So if we take this one here, which is a ground, we know that it's gonna be somewhere in here and we get the tone again with where the ground pin is on the board. So that's a multimeter. Um, like I said, you don't have to go. This one was a little spendy. Um, the 10, 15, 20 dollar one you see at Walmart is fine for a beginner. Um, just make sure that it does have those three functions, um, resistance, um, a diode function, and of course. Um, is there a particular temp we should target? Um, it should say on your solder, um, I use leaded solder and I'm running at 325 Celsius. So that would be a good starting point. Um, if you got lead free solder, that's gonna be hotter. Um, but oftentimes, depending on your manufacturer, it gives it might give you a range on the side. Um, unfortunately, the stuff I bought did not. Um, otherwise, I'd put it on the on the screen. Um, I like using what's called a 6337 mix, which is 37% um, lead. I know lead, lead, lead. Um, lead is one of those weird topics when it comes to hobby electronics. Some people are like, oh my God, no, 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 no. Um, the reality is, is that if you read the material data safety sheet for leaded solder, um, it's going to tell you to not lick your hands, not lick the solder, and wash your hands when you're done. That's pretty much it, um, and you'll be fine. So let's go ahead and get started on our build. And we're gonna start with our resistors. I've already got the 10 ohm resistors bent. Um, they should have been blue in the packaging, I do believe. I sent those out a while ago. I can't recall offhand, but... So we're gonna start with the 10 ohm. So, ohm. Um, you'll know these for two reasons. One, there was a pack of two resistors as opposed to our pack of four resistors. Um, so let's go ahead and get those. Um, you can try to bend them in a U shape just with your fingers. That works just fine. But we're gonna go ahead and throw those in at R1 and R2. And you can put them both in at the same time. If I can get my fingers to work. So they should be flat against the board. I should really be watching the screen here. They should be flat against the board with the other end sticking up. 
and you can bend them out just a little bit just to make sure that they stay flat when as you're flipping the board around or moving or checking um, checking so let's go ahead and solder these and I think I got a little more magnified view if we get into position here there we go so there's our first resistor ready to go I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my tip is shiny shiny uh emily this is a ball of um of like a brass scouring pad and i like it better than say using a wet sponge as we um as it's often as it's often uh, a little uh it's a little you lose less heat uh using a ball of 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 a brass blur pad like this versus using a wet sponge. Um, it's just a preference. Know the direction of the resistors do not matter. It will, res it will slow down the electrons no matter which way you put it in. So let's go ahead and do one here. Here's one and two. And so what we're looking for and so what we're looking for here here and get that screen there we go um, is kind of a Hershey's kiss shape it should be flat where it touches the board and then kind of cone up onto the thing. So let's do the other one. Spinny, spinny, spinny. There we go. Bring out some more solder here. And looks like I need, oh, there we go. And there's one, and there's two. And we'll go ahead and clean. And where are those stamp cheaters? There we go. Okay. Okay. So we've got one and two done. And looks like this one here, oops, this one here, I'm going to rework a little. It was a little cold. You can tell it's not quite touching the component. So let's go ahead and make sure our iron is clean and get back in there. And just give it another go here. There we go. So that's one and two done. So we'll take our clippers. And when you clip off things, um, hold on to the other piece, piece otherwise you'll send them flying. Um, and trust me, if you've ever stepped on a Lego, thousand times worse. Thousand times, way worse, way, way, way worse. There we go. So we grab this, clip at the top of the solder, and boom, done. And as you can see on the front, and we're going to go back to this view, I think is a little better. As you can see, we've got our two resistors now. Now, these are 10 ohm for the blue. Um, the rest of them take 68 ohm. Um, when I was first, do, when they first announced the Pico board and I was doing this project, they actually had the resist the resistors for using LEDs with a Pico listed at, at 220 ohms. Um, yeah, that 
and the math didn't add up on that. So that's why if you see documentation for the Phi Pico, it may say to use a 220 ohm resistor. Um, the math says to use the ones that I've included in the kit. So there's one and two. And so now we're going to move on to the rest of them. What, if, what am I doing wrong if the melted solder climbs up the iron and not on the board? Clean the tip. Clean the tip. The tip of your iron should be shiny, shiny, shiny. Um, you may need to tin your tip, which is basically we take a little solder and we melt it on to where it needs to be shiny, shiny, shiny. And then clean it again. Almost time for a new one. All right. And then it will again be shiny, shiny, shiny and flow much faster. All right. So we've got our bender. And I'll do one by hand just to kind of show you that it can be done by hand. Just take a finger, hold the main part of the component, bend it down, same situation. Okay, so the other four resistors are gonna go in the other four, four holes marked with an R. So that's going to be R4, R5, oh, excuse me, or R3, R4, R5, and R6. And we're going to set, once again, we're going to place them all at once so that we can solder them all at once. So there we go, they're all flat, flip it over, do it again, and I'll do the first plop over. Okay, there we go. And if we switch views here, here to the magnifying blue, <laughs> I'm gonna go through this joint in in very great detail just so that you get a better feel for it and we're on oh my camera okay this one here okay so um first thing we're going to do is we want to touch the tip to both the the circle pad and the leg of the component and you really only need to touch it for a second or two, we want to get that good and hot and then add in, dip in with your solder. And that's really all there is to it. Um, it takes a little practice like anything else, um, but that really is all that is to it. We want to heat up the work, add a little solder, let it cool on its own. And we'll flip back here. And another tip is don't be afraid to move your thing to where you're working in a comfortable position. Um, if that means flipping the board, turning the board, um, doing a part and clipping those leads so that you're not tripping over them. Um, do what you need to do to make sure that every joint that you're doing is as easy as possible. And again, we'll trim these. And get 
got the little baby waste bucket <laughs> and tidy up. All right, so if you have soldered on all of your resistors, let me know by throwing any kind of smiley face, emoji, uh, check mark, okay, whatever in the chat and we'll give everybody a couple of minutes before we move on. Messed up, all, okay, yes, we will get to that right now as long as, as, as uh, we have a question. Um, let me put this aside. I want to bring this out. It's just a scrap perf board. It's much easier for me to um, demo things like this on a, on a scrap perf piece of perf board than anything else. Um, so I'm just going to grab random LED. Um, we're not going to really worry about what how the LED is other than I'm going to slap it on with too much solder and go from there. So we have our LED and let's say we have way too much solder. Shoink. That's a lot. And that's a lot. And oh, can I get a bridge? Can I get a bridge? Nope, can't get a bridge today. Okay. So if you have too much solder, uh, the first thing I would try is just reheat it. Um, a lot of it will flow into the hole and actually come out a little bit on the other side, and that's usually okay. Um, another way to get rid of excess solder, or in this case, remove the part, um, solder wick. If you have some, will absorb all of this and I should be able to get the resistor or the LED here out. And as you can see, I used the solder wick, I got the LED back out. Um, another way you can do this, and I would only do this if you are alone in the room, is if you watch these holes here, Make sure, see, yeah, I've got some filled holes here. Maybe if we could tilt it a little bit. Um, what you can do is you can heat it for a while. And this is real old school method of doing this is you heat it, make sure it's really, really hot and then slam it down. And as you can see, maybe is that middle hole hole is now empty. Um, that middle hole that did have a bunch of solder in it will now take a leg of this demo LED, whereas before it was solid. Um, third is if you're if you bought one of those starter kits, we got our solder sucker, push it down, heat up the work. And it's good and hot, press the button. And that too, if we can get and it's a little blurry. Let's go over here. Let's try the other view. And microscope is there. Okay. And as you can see on the top row, I cleaned out that middle one by slamming it against the board by slamming it against the table. And the bottom right, I used the solder sucker. Sorry, that's a little blurry. Down a little bit. Um, otherwise, um, continue on, Matt. We've got a session coming up at noon where I can help you a little more, where, you, where, uh, where we'll be able to help you a little further, further and have you take over the, the camera to, to show me where you're at, okay? All right. So, 
and I'll also pull out a different scrap board that's a little easier to see. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the build now. Um, we'll trim off the rest of the resistors. So that I can lay my board flat. And I have no nails. All right. So, and we'll go back to the other view. All right, so we've got our resistors. They're all done nice and pretty. Pretty, it's time to move on. The next thing on our build list is going to be the LEDs. Um, would you, if you, when we're doing it, when you're doing a build just on a table, or in my case, a nice silicon mat, um, you wanna go from the flattest thing on up. So if, so the things that's going to be shortest to the board we want to do first the things that are tallest we want to do last so we're going to move on to our leds and we'll do the blue ones first just like we did their resistors first and now a note on the anatomy of an led if you look at a through hole led very carefully, you're going to find that one side of the bottom ring is going to be flat. And you can kind of see it here. Let's see if you can get it. Where are we? There we go. Get up in the magnifying corner, maybe. Okay, this bit is flat. Um, let me see if I've got. Um, here's a Here's actually a 10 millimeter one. You might be able to see it a little better, but we can see that where the negative leg is, that that is actually a flat surface. If you can't see it, you can definitely feel it. Where one side is flat, that flat side indicates the negative leg. It also matches the silk screen on the board. So find your little flat notch and make sure that your LEDs are lined up with that. So we'll add our two blue LEDs. There's a flat side, there we go. And it's usually the shorter leg is also the flat or negative side. Okay, so we've got our two blue LEDs. It's in. Now put your thumbs on the board. and go and turn them over. Now, when you do LEDs, um, especially when we're doing them like this with just a table, there's a little trick here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do one leg on each of them. Sorry. Yes, we're gonna do this first leg here And here and then we're going to just double check that these are flat to the board and if they're not flat to the board just go ahead and refill reflow I'm sorry reflow the the one joint with a little extra heat and a little pressure on the top and you will always get nice flat LEDs So then we can go ahead and finish these up. Make sure we're in frame here. And 
And then we're going to go ahead and nip those off. Okay. All right, does everybody have their blue LEDs done? Um, the flat side should be the, sh the okay, Priam asked, miss the LED part. Will the shorter leg of the LED go to the flat side? Yes, the shorter, the shorter leg should be lined up with that flat notch, which should match the flat part of the silk screen there. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll move on to the green ones. And same thing, short, flat, according to the silk screen. And short, flat, according to the silk screen. These should be the middle LEDs, three and four. Um, try turning up, uh, Sakura, um, asked, what am I doing wrong? The solder isn't melting as quick as mine. Um, turn up the heat a little. Um, if you bought a, one of those, uh, everything you need kits from Amazon, they include lead free solder, which, um, in a tube like this, which needs a little more heat than the stuff I'm using. So I would try, let's see, I'm at 350 centigrade. I would try, I would try 400. So let's go ahead, find a good camera angle here. Clean the tip. Go ahead and do the leg that's closest to me. There. There. And there. And then we'll just check these that they're flat. That one looks good. That one's up a little, so let's go ahead and do that trick again, where we're pressing down on the LED, or we're pressing the LED towards the board and just letting the solder reflow a little bit. Oh, hey, we let that reflow a little too much. Oh, the joys of live demos. So all I did was I heated that up from the top, made sure I could get my leg through. And now we're just gonna hold it for a second and make sure it's cool before we try flipping the board over. Okay. And a little off screen there. There we go. And there's one. Two. Yeah, that one's still a little high. That's okay. And this one's still a little high. So once again, a little rework. 
and we're good. And we'll go ahead and trim those. And go ahead and give me an OK, a K, an emoji, whatever, um, if you've got your green and blue LEDs done. Okay. All right, we're going to move on to the reds then. And there's one. And there's two. And we'll flip the board. Add some solder. There and there, and then we'll check the positioning. And if we're off a little, that's okay. That's why we only do the one leg. Spin it around, check the other one. solder the other leg. And clippy, clippy, done. Okay, moving on to the buttons. Your buttons came in two parts. You had this guy here. And then, of course, you had the cap. The caps just snap on, like so. But let's, uh, until they're on the board, let's leave the caps off. Just makes it a little bit easier. Now, unlike our resistors and our LEDs, these you have to put in, kind of work the two legs in on one side, and then they just kind of snap in place on the other. And they do take a little more work to get in than our LEDs. So there's one. two and then we'll flip them up now the thing with 
when once we get the buttons is the buttons a they're going to take a little more solder and a little more time to do um, and b we're not going to clip the leads they're already short and rounded we don't need to so let's go ahead and get those attached And there's one side. And a little flip. Bring this in. And then we'll flip to the I'll flip to the magnified view here a little bit so you can see how those joints are just slightly different from the ones we have been doing. So yeah, they're a little bigger, they'll take a little longer, a little more solder, and we don't need to clip them. So there's our buttons. Okay, so then now our buttons are in place, we can add the caps. Yay. All right. And is everybody caught up to this point? Let's go ahead and flood the chat with more emojis. Um, that's Windows period if you're on Windows. Oh, just it's not done. It's fine. We can wait. We're okay. This is my room. If we need more than an hour, that's fine. Not a huge deal. All right. All righty, so as much as I'd like to sit and read my Twitter feed, um, is everybody ready to move on? Yes, okay. So next we're gonna do the screen, which is the last component that sits on the top of the board. Okay, Matt, we'll wait. We can wait.
Okay, while we're waiting, waiting for Matthew, a little note on the little screens you got. Um, most people should have gotten this screen um, with a black PCB. Um, some of you may have gotten this blue PCB. Um, and they're the same board. Um, they just redesigned it. So the black one is a hair. So the hat, so the black one is a hair smaller. Um, it really isn't any big deal. It's the same components. They just found a way to shape, shave a sliver of PCB off of them, off of them. Um, and with supply chain issues, obviously getting 50 of one thing isn't always easy. Um, so they said, I ordered these, they sent in somewhere, somewhere these, it's not a big deal. Um, that's the other thing is that these do come in two or three different colored screens. So it's supposed to be white. Um, we'll give them a pass because I got a really good deal if some are blue or yellow. Um, not a big deal. So let's put, so we'll use the blue one on this first build here. And so what we're doing is we're basically matching the, the silk screen. There's a little bit of a uh, flexi connector and that lines up with this notch and then the four holes on top go right in. Um, and this thing is not going to um, sit perfectly flat. It is gonna sit at a little angle. It does make it a little easier to read. Um, so we're not gonna worry about it being perfectly flat. We are gonna follow the same kind of practice that we've done with our LEDs, however, and we're only gonna do one pin and let me get that so that it's in both screens maybe. Now we can see it and we can see it in the magnified view in the corner. So we're just going to do one pin just like we did on our LEDs. Let it cool. Flip it over. And as you can see, mine is way too high. So just like our LEDs, I'm going to hold it in my left hand. Um, heat that pin up again with my right and just apply a little pressure. And now that we can check that it's, yeah, it's reasonably where we want it. We'll go ahead and solder up those other three pins. And now we can solder up the other three pins. There's one. There's two. And there's three. And clean the iron. And then just to give everybody a little extra time, um, I'm going to take a second and talk about this stuff here. Um, as you solder, you're going to see you're going to see that it leaves a kind of gooey residue on the back on the back of your board on the solder joints. Um, this is the flux that's in the middle of your piece of solder. Um, your solder is basically, um, if we use this sharpie maybe as kind of a model, if I can find the tip, there we go. Um, on this example, if this was your flux it, or if this was your solder, it works the same way. The plastic casing is the actual metal and then the felt part in the middle is actually um, 
Fox Flux, which is um, a a mixture of tree resins to help the flotter so f the solder flow better. Oh, all those all those years in speech therapy. Still not great. All right. So let's flip back to the wide view here. And with this one, we are going to take the extra pins. And just because I don't want these all over my house, you're not going to see it. But there we go. Clippy, clippy. What is the screen going to do? Well, it says Supernatural 6. And the reason it says Supernatural 6 is because, well, that's kind of breaking all kinds of copyright issues, but this was my inspiration. So the screen is going to light up with text that says things like the Supernatural 6 ball says, backups, what backups? Or other things like needs director level approval. Um, here is actually a finished one, as long as we're taking a minute to make sure that everybody is in the exact same place. Um, this is the finished, this is what'll happen when it's finished. And then if you hit the white button, the screen actually comes up with a different fortune. This is my favorite. I don't know if you can read it real well. Um, it says squirrels. Um, I was, I did work um, help desk for an ISP for a while. We had one gentleman who really liked our service, liked our people, but we were out there replacing the drop to his house every couple of years because there were some squirrels that had gotten the taste for the line. And so they would chew on it. All right, is everybody caught? Is everybody caught up? Everything on the front is done, except for Matt, who I know we have to help get his resistors sorted out in during the next session. Okay, so now we're gonna flip it over and move it into screen. Because, all right. So this is the backside. Um, this is where our Pi Pico is going to go. Um, I did go ahead um, and silk screen on what everything is. Um, in addition, you'll note you'll notice on the front that there were some pins that we didn't use. Um, those actually will lead back back if you want to add your own component like a buzzer or another LED or if you want to try um, running some NeoPixels. Um, Pic pixels. This thing does have an internal temperature sensor. You could, you know, switch it over to, to kind of a, a room thermometer. Those kinds of things. Um, things. And we'll give Secure another moment here, because now you're going to have to make a choice. And your choice is going to be as follows. I sent along two kinds of pin headers. These are female, these are male. And the reason I did that was because these boards are new and quantities are limited like everything else in, in technology right now, although they rolled their own silicone, it helps. Um, you have the option to set this up to be able to take the Pi Pico off of here and use it on a breadboard. Um, so if you want to do that, we're going to start with the female headers. We're going to put the female headers into the board and then solder them. Um, if you want to leave this permanent because let's face it, these guys are only four bucks a piece and they are starting to come back into stock um, in all the usual places, DigiKey, Adafruit, um, et cetera. Um, we can make it permanent by using just the male headers. So for reasons of practice, I would say let's use the, I'm gonna use the female headers in the demo. So we start with one strip, either side, 
And you want to make sure that it is lined up, that you don't have any extra holes. Nope. Okay, good. And then just like our friendly LEDs and the screen and everything else, we're going to do one pin and one pin only so that we can reflow it. And let's see if I get that. Yeah, I did get that. Okay. Okay, I got it, but as you can see, it's up and crooked and all those things, which is why we do one pin only. So that we can reflow the solder that's there and make sure that it's square and even and flush with the board. And so this is the practice part. Let me go ahead and we'll get you lots and lots of soldering practice on pin headers. Because this is actually these days going to be your most common task if you're soldering something. Um, usually it's adding a screen, a microcontroller, or whatever um, to a piece of proto board or a custom PCB. And we just go right down the line. One by one. By one, by one. And that's all of them. And so I'm going to lift this up and kind of visually inspect it myself. And all of these are okay. Um, this is a toy to sit on your desk at work and say, here, see what I made. Um, it's not going to Mars. So I'm going to call all of these acceptable um, technically. If this was going to Mars, this one here has a little too little solder. Yeah, that one ha there has a bit much. But for this kind of job, we're OK. And let me flip over to the magnified view. So you, can kind of, so you can see what I'm talking about. And it's the. And the third and you can see the third one has a little less solder and some of them have a little more. Um, we're doing the female headers, which are the. Which are these guys here. Um, that's because Raspberry Pi Picos are new and I want you to be able to experiment with them later. Um, if you don't think you're going to experiment with the laters, you can skip ahead and just use the male headers on both sides. So we're going to take our other female header here. And this one should be a lot easier to get right because we're not dealing with a tippy board. It's actually got some balance to it now on side two. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to do just one pin. Just 
just to check the fit because as you can see the one that I'm starting on it's bent so let's get that corrected before we do the rest and there we go now we're neat and even and can flip it over and do the rest yep we're good there so we'll just get that in frame flip over to our magnified view and just keep going and these are no different than say your resistors or your LEDs at the end of the day um, We're just trying to fill up the gap between the little leg and the part and the hole that it sits in with metal so that we can make the electrons flow. Yeah, we got another one there. Another one there. And we just keep going. Lots and lots of practice with through hole joinery when you have to do lots and lots of pin headers. There we go. And once again, we'll check these out. Pretty good. That looks really good. Flip back to wide view. Give everybody a minute. Or two to catch up. Um, like I was saying, you're going to see, feel a little goo. Uh, that's flux. Um, rubbing alcohol. Um, a little soap and water with the pie with the pie pico removed um, if you're really really into it an ultrasonic cleaner um, but for something like this um, rubbing alcohol 70% um, or better is fine um, you're going to want to use a something that doesn't have something that's super fibery. So I would use like a paper towel versus, say, a Q-tip. Um, you just want to get that off of there, otherwise it can oxidize. <laughs> you can always, yes, you can always catch 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 up with the video recordings and relive the beautiful moments. Thank you. That is sweet. All right. So we've got our female headers. And we've got our Pi Pico. Now, everybody has a different way of doing pin and headers on a board. Um, some people use a breadboard. They will lock the, the headers into a breadboard and then put the Pico on top. Now we could do these like we did the female header and just do one and go forth. Um, we're going to cheat a little and kind of do a hybrid thing. So go ahead and take the male header pins and make sure that they're flat with the female part of the board. 
and we want to put the long ends down into the female headers and leave the short spikes so that we don't have to trim them on the top. And then if our female headers are good and our male headers are good, this guy should, with a little wiggling, just drop right into place. And as you can see, even without any solder, it's already flat. It's there. We're golden. So at this point, um, it is 10 after 1. Um, sorry, this ran a little long. Um, well, and so we'll just go ahead and start soldering these. Same as before. Um, the only difference with these joints as opposed to some of our others is you do not need to completely cover this pad with solder. Um, these were these boards were designed as kind of a hybrid model. Um, we could do use them as a surface mount thing, or we can use them as a through hole thing. So the pads for the pins actually extend down the side, and then if we were doing this as a um, as a surface mount, let me grab a pin. We could actually just put a little dip of solder here in this notch and we'd get a connection to a plain pad. Short, pin, short pins go up because you don't want to have to try to get in, in on this board with your cutting tool to try to make them short. So the long pins should be filling up the plastic well, there's more than plastic in there, but the long pins should fit in to the female header and go all the way down. So if we look with this extra strip that I have handy, the short side is up and going into the Pi Pico. Matt, I really, really want to see a picture of your board, man. I really do. So um, think of this as like an inside view. We've got the short legs pointing up to the Pico, long legs down. OK, so we'll just continue on. these guys and if you need to go um, basically this is the last step um, if you want to stay and ask a few more questions um, I'll be logging off a little bit for a little bit here here in about 10 minutes so just keep practicing Let's move this up and over. <laughs> well, good for her. That's what we like to see here. Do some over here in the magnified view if I can get a good angle. Or not. Make sure the iron's clean.
And yeah, even I can't do it perfectly all the time. Ooh. I wonder. Okay. So I'll go ahead and finish this later. Does anybody have any more, any other questions, any other, any other concerns? Um, we can talk about it more where you guys can take over the, the screen um, at the noon session. Um, Okay, um, Matt, the Pi Picos don't have any code in them right now. I'm trying to remember if they actually do do a demo. Let me plug this one in. So, yeah, these boards don't have. I don't remember if they have any code in them or not. Um, not. Um, you might have to wait for tomorrow's session where we actually do, do the code. Um, code. Um, as far as getting power, I keep resetting the damn thing. Um, as far as getting power, um, there's USB. There are USB here. Let me flip over. They are just USB powered. Um, I do have a session planned um, where I can show you how, where we can talk about what kind of batteries they need um, and that. But yeah, they shouldn't really be doing anything right now. Um, if you want to, um, the female pins were short down. Um, the holes for the female pins should be pointing at the back of the board. Um, if you want to work ahead, um, you can head over to my blog. Let me pull that page up. In fact, I'll just spam chat here again. Uh, Cappy. And based. So there's a link here. Uh, it's my blog, it didn't get moved over because um, our web lady had other things, many, many things to do um, beforehand. There really isn't any code on these. These um, I shipped them out direct from the manufacturer. So no, it's not gonna do anything until after tomorrow's session. Otherwise, um, there is instructions and the code that I used um, on my blog, if you want to work on it tonight. But yeah, they are just USB powered. And uh, please, if you enjoyed this um, and have and are thinking about attending next year when we are hopefully again in person, um, please do take that two question survey that was also in what I just spammed to chat. Um, I'm trying to uh, make this more of a maker's village and not necessarily a soldering village, um, village because I think that, um, you know, everybody needs a hobby. Everybody needs to have, have a way to relax 
And, you know, this isn't going to do it for some people and it does it for others. So um, I do do a lot of different crafts and, and would be more than happy to, to expand what I teach at the village. Oh, does anybody have any questions or concerns right now? Um, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to sign off. Um, I'll put the countdown timer back up for uh, about 40 minutes, um, and then I will come back and and take a uh, and then I will uh, and then we'll have an hour where we'll take. Um, any questions um, about the build or about soldering? Um, if you want me to demo something um, else, we'll, we can certainly, I can certainly do that. I've got a whole wall of parts in front of me. Um, so yeah, if you have those questions on, you know, maybe how do I get rid of an extra part? Um, how does how does you know this work or that work? Um, if I have an answer for you, I'll be more than happy to share. And that's our next session, which starts in about 40 minutes. Thank you guys for coming, and I will see you all later. And I'm back. Um, this is our noon session. Um, that is basically it's open Q and A. Um, if you had any questions about the build or soldering in general um, or anything else that I might be able to answer for y'all, um, just go ahead and type them in the chat and we'll go from there. So I think I have everything centered. Can you talk on the other talk? Yeah, I usually do stop. Uh, Matt asked, um, he thinks he's got everything good to go. Um, can I talk on the other talk later today or and the ones tomorrow. Um, yeah, I do try to stop every few minutes um, so that y'all can answer questions and we can all kind of stick together as far as as uh, being on the same parts or page. Um, is there anything else that you wanted another look at, Matt? Good.
Let's see. Let's see if anybody has any questions. Let's build a random thing. Um, this is a three AAA battery holder, so it's going to put out about four and a half volts. So how many how many LEDs can Chris put in in parallel and make a cheesy flashlight? One tap, fine. You know it. All right, so we're gonna take big blue and power them with three triple A's on this piece of perf board. straight up power and LED. We're going to add an LED to our proto board. a solderable breadboard. So we got big blue. Got one here. And there. Wow, that's old. All right.
So once again, does anybody have any questions, comments, anything you'd like? Once again, did anybody have any questions or comments or anything uh, that they'd like demoed? So what I'm playing with right now is basically just a simple light circuit. Um, it goes from here. Yeah, down only four and a half volts to our light. Now let's see if I can grab an extra button or something to make it a little more interesting. Um, not demoed, but what is a good starter project to teach my daughter to solder? Um, probably the way I learned, um, was through kits. Um, I'm trying to remember the name, the brand name off hand, but if you look, um, on Amazon and other places, um, you can find soldering kits. Um, I want to say Elco or Enco um, makes different kits um, where you end up with little things like um, with like radios or um, somebody sent me this guy to review. He was pretty simple. Um, simple to do, but that's probably the best way is to find a small kit or a small project on um, on instructables um, this is actually if it works when it works it works um, it's like it's sound activated lights so that was a fun kit um, they sent it to me to review um, probably not something I'd go normally and get myself but it was fun um, so I know there's, pull up my friend here. Um, Tindy is another good resource. Um, I just did a quick Amazon search on Learn to Solder Kits. Um, and it's coming up with like some Blinkies and um, 
little Christmas tree. Um, mostly what you want to look for is um, things that have a low part count or are interesting. Yeah, um, yeah, hacker boxes, they're okay. Um, Okay, yeah, if she's a college kid, hacker boxes are fine. Um, if she was a little younger, I would have recommended something like that. Yeah, beam stuff's good. Um, check Tindy. Um, I know a lot of independent makers will put out learn to soldering kits for both through hole and surface mount. Um, um, Adafruit does a box, although they're less on straight up soldering and more about experiences.
Any other questions? Anything else you want to talk about? Um, Um, I will, there is a whole session about the software um, tomorrow. There's two, I have two scheduled sessions for uh, for getting the, the boards up and running. I do believe they are again at noon and two. Let's check the schedule. Uh, yep. Let's see, 10 a.m. local time for me or no that's that's right this has already been corrected yeah 10 a.m and 2 p.m we will be doing uh software for the for the build and then there will be a bonus session at three um basically i had some trouble getting parts in um and then we'll talk about the different ways you can power power the build build to make it a little more mobile.
right, there's about 10 minutes left in this in the session. Um, last call for any questions, comments, anything you'd like to see demoed. <laughs> Thanks for your demo. I gotta pull out my hacker box and work on it anyway. Yeah. All right, so next session will be another build, and that will happen in one hour and seven minutes approximately. Um, if you haven't already built your kit or just want to watch it again, go ahead and come to this session. If not, we'll be working on code, um, getting the little guys programmed tomorrow at either 10 a.m. or, noon, or excuse me, 10 a.m. or 2 p.m. Um, at noon, I've got a buddy of mine, um, Ben Hibben um, is going to work through a surface or work through part of a surface mount kit um, just to give you guys a feel for that. Um, and then at three, we'll be having a bonus session um, due to some shipping issues. Um, I did not get all the parts I needed for portable power uh, until today, assuming my package is on my doorstep like, like they say it is. All right, guys, talk to you later. Hey guys, just checking to see if anyone can hear while we wait for our next presenter in 46 minutes. My camera is not as good as Chris, but I'm going to work on something I'm soldering, which is, uh, this is a Geiger counter kit from RH Electronics. Let's see if I can get in front of the camera. So I built this one previously and then got this kit here we can build. So these are pretty simple to do. They're almost all through hull. There's really no surface mount. The surface mount stuff he he does ahead of time. So you don't have to worry about doing that if you're scared of doing surface mount. So I'll show you the board here real quick. So you see the board there. It's pretty much all through hull. There's some surface mount stuff for the voltage controller, but Nothing too difficult. So, 
I've just got a little pair of helping hands here. We'll get this set up in there. So just a reminder to check out our sponsors who have helped sponsor this wonderful Diana initiative. You can check those out on the Diana, Diana initiative website. And I posted the schedule in the chat. So if you're wondering who's next, you can check that out. Let's see what we should start with. Let's see, let's see. Snip these open real quick. So if, if you're wondering where to get some good tools for doing this, a lot of the tools I enjoy for soldering are secondhand surgical tools you can get on eBay. You can get really, really nice pairs of, of forceps and various other things you can use for doing your soldering things like this where it's tweezers but they lock rather than staying open make it a little easier to hold things while you're doing it this one came in one of my hacker boxes if you want to check them out hacker boxes is online it's run by one of the defcon guys really fun little kits every month well, let's dump out these components. So, we'll start with the buzzer. It's the easiest one. So, let's see which one of these is positive. So, this little buzzer. Let's see how my previous one looks. It doesn't really tell you which pins are which. Okay. Looks like the label has to be facing that way on the top of the buzzer. So I'm going to remove this. I'm going to get those lined up. solder on there. find the LED in here. The switch. Switch is a good start. Switch goes right here. So you can see it's silk screened. Let's see if we get in front of the camera. Let's flip those over. So sometimes what I do is I'll take, like say you want this thing to stay on, Take some tweezers that'll lock closed like that, use them to lock them in place. Now that we got one solder, we can take these off. Put them back on our cup for later. So 
the stuff like switches sometimes it's a little harder to solder because they have a lot of metal to sink the heat away from your soldering iron so it can be a little bit of a pain you got to get that metal a little hotter to get the solder to join but you also want to make sure mm, might have a bridge there we don't want that so let's see if we can So, especially with things that are really close together, like you can see that switch and there's a resistor right there. Yeah, they might be bridged. That's when you got to pull out something like a jeweler's loop to really take a look at it. Let's see if I can find some of my jeweler's loops here. Oh, I've got my magnifying headset. See if we can steal one of the lenses off this guy and use it on the camera so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So let's see. Get it in front of the camera. And then. Kind of difficult to do with the camera. Sorry, guys. But what we're looking for, as you can kind of see, it's a little, pull the solder is a little closer to that resistor that we want. So we might use our desoldering wick and take some of that away so that we don't risk having a problem. Or where's my uh, desoldering vacuum? Somewhere over here. Wick or vacuum. Up to the trees. Vacuum will work. So, just get the solder flowing again. a little bit there. Let's see if we can cycle it. Yeah, that should be good for now. So we can finish soldering that switch in place. a different camera here in a sec because this one's kind of too far away. So we soldered the switch on now. So let's see what we can do next. So there's the LED. So remember check your polarity. There's two ways to do that. It's the length of the legs. Close up to the camera. So with LEDs, you can either check the length of the legs or there's a little cutout flat point on one of the side of the LEDs. So let's see if we can. Not the greatest camera. Honestly, the board camera probably would be better. Let's try that real quick. Okay, hello everyone. All right, um, this is the Supernatural 6 build. Um, build, this is the second session of this today. So yeah, we are gonna do it again. Uh, my name's Chris. Um, I've been doing this for a long time. Um, 
Um, I've ran the I ran the in-person village and have come up with some of the projects for here as well. Um, I do want to give a shout out to our diamond and platinum sponsors. Um, our diamond sponsors, INE, eLearn Security, and Axionis. And our platinum and gold sponsors, MongoDB, Juniper Networks, Corelight, Google, and Bridge Crew. Thanks, guys. Um, no, they do do a lot for us. Um, most of the stuff for this village was paid for through the kits. So thank you to you all as well. Um, and so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, just as a matter of kind of housekeeping, um, one of the things I get a lot of question on is if I flip over to our build view, maybe find the right switch. Gotta find the right shot here. There we go. I flip over to the build view. Um, in addition to my soldering iron, and our soldering irons should always be super duper shiny at the tip where it matters. Um, you will also see some other tools come into view and I just wanted to kind of let you know what they were. Um, um, this is a resistor bender. Um, I got this one a long time ago. I actually inherited it. Um, to give you some idea, this is Radio Shack Red. Um, and what it does is that you can use it to make your resistor just look a little more nice. Um, other things you might see coming in, um, obviously angle cutters, because let's face it, we're not gonna use all of this soldering in. Um, this is uh, how I clean my iron. It's, um, it's basically like a brass scrubby pad. I buy them in bulk. bulk. Um, so basically the idea is that um, instead of using a wet piece of sponge to clean my, outer, my soldering iron, I like the brass um, because if you're traveling, you don't have to worry about a sponge. Um, also, it's a little easier on your soldering tips because you're not, um, once you're up to temperature, you're not shocking the tip every time you wipe it on, on a wet sponge. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I'm just saying I like this better. Um, teeters, old, help me see. We'll put those on now and no, I'm not turning on back on the other camera where you can see my head. Uh, let's see. Oh, very good, Steven. Thank you. And let's see what else. Okay. Um, you might see this. Um, I usually pull this out once a session because Somebody will ask how to desolder. This is a solder sucker. Um, you depress the plunger, hit the button, and it basically creates a small vacuum, just enough to pull some excess solder off the board. Um, I also use solder wick. Um, good thing to have on hand if you plan to do more soldering. Um, definitely recommend I prefer this brand. Um, it's a Japanese brand um, and it's kind of awesome. Um, I actually got a blob on my Pi Pico from the first build session and was able to remove it with that stuff. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're gonna start with um, resistor one and resistor two. And the reason we start with resistors is that if you think of your board on this flat plane, you want to build it up in increments. So we want to be able to keep all of our resistors flat against the table. So we'll put those on first and then our LEDs are gonna be taller. So we'll do them next and then the buttons and so on and so forth. Um, later we'll have much fun with solder pins. All right, so let's do, we're gonna do uh, resistor one, resistor two. These are 10 ohm resistors. Um, if anybody has been reading any um, PyPico documentation, they say 220. Um, I don't know where they got the 220 from um, for their resistors. 
when I do the math using standard 2.2 volt resistors and 3.2 volt resistor or LEDs. Wow, it's been a long day. Um, the math te is telling me to use what I what I put in the kit, which was 10 ohm for the blue and 68 ohm for the rest. So we've got our two resistors. We've bent them up. We've put them in the holes. Uh, make sure they are flat to the board and you can bend the, le the rear legs out a little bit um, to help hold them in place. And then when we go to solder, first thing we do is we check our iron, make sure it's shiny, shiny, shiny. And if not, give it a quick clean. If it's a new iron, I recommend tinning it, which is basically we're just gonna put a little solder everywhere and then clean that off. Lightly, okay. So for these first couples, let me pull up the, let me get into our magnified view here. And we'll switch over to the magnified view. And which side are we doing here? Okay, we did this side. All right, and so take our soldering iron and we hold the part in the pad and you just want to give it a couple of seconds to make sure everything's good and hot. Okay, usually one second, maybe two, all depends. So it's basically hold, tap, remove, and you're done. And what we're looking for with a good solder joint, it's, I don't know how well you can, I can see that maybe, there we go, is we're looking for a shape like a Hershey's Kiss. Um, it should be, it should be kind of a cone shape with the leg being the, the pattern. And then if we look at the front, maybe look at the front, there we go. Um, and then if we look at the front, the hole's all the way filled in. In fact, I got a little bulging out on either side. So that's so that's a good way to do that. And then we'll do the other one here on magnification. If I can get it centered or lined up. There we go. So here's the other 10 ohm resistor. And we'll just heat that up and down and then the next. Okay, and now that these are done, we'll go ahead and take our clippers. And get rid of the extra. And do try to hold on to what you're trying to clip off of the board when you're clipping it off, um, just because otherwise you end up with little tiny, sh incredibly sharp bits of metal like that um, in your carpet or on your floor. And if you've, and trust me, if, you've ever stepped on a Lego, stepping on something like that is uh, about a billion times worse, yes, because those do draw blood. So yeah, you do want to keep track of your excess, your excess bits, legs from resistors or LEDs or, or uh, errant uh, pins. Um, surface mount stuff you'll never ever see again if it goes on the floor. Um, that's just an immutable law of law of the universe. 
Um, so don't worry about that too much. So we're going to go ahead and do the rest of the resistors. And that was the four pack included in your kit. And I'll just bend this last one here by hand just to give you some idea. All right, so there's our resistors all bent and ready to put in. And these are going to go in R3, R4, R5, and R6. And resistors are not polarized, which means that it doesn't matter. I can put it like this with the gold towards the center, or I can put it like that with the gold towards the outside. Um, if you want to have them a certain way, um, for aesthetic reasons, um, that's cool. It's kind of handy, but it really isn't that important that they all point the same direction. There's no positive, no negative. They're not polarized. So let's go ahead and bend this out just a little bit to make sure they stay. And we'll go ahead and solder these. All right, so that's the resistors. And like I said, when you clip, make sure you thing. And yeah, I I do have a magnet that I've used on occasion. Um, mostly to clean up the old desk, but usually for cleanup. I'm doing everything 100% the way I'm supposed to be. I found a little tiny trash can at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> um, so go ahead. Um, let's go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and do a ready check here. If you're all done soldering all six resistors, go ahead and give me a K or a smiley face or emoji or whatever else in the chat, and then we'll move on to the LEDs. Okay, so we're going to move on to the LEDs and apparently I am missing one. Apparently I miscounted when I, when I bend this up to make it easy, so let me just fight with some plastic here. Yeah, fighting with the plastic. There's the blues. Got an extra blue. Okay. So we've got our two blue LEDs. Um, now, unlike our resistors, LEDs do have a right and a wrong way to go in the board. Um. <laughs> it's not the easiest to see, but you will definitely feel it. Um, there is a flat spot in the bottom ring on an LED. Um, and also one leg is longer than the other. So to match what's on the silk screen, we want to make sure that that flat notch and the short leg 
are in the bottom hole. And that's on LED 1 and 2. So short leg, flat spot, matches the flat spot in the silk screen. And so we're going to hold them down, flip them over. You can bend them out a little bit. But if I'm working flat on a table like this, um, one of the best tricks I've learned for dealing with um, some of these through hole components that you really do want flush to the board, but maybe don't sit nicely on a table, is we do the first leg on each one. And just give them a little solder. And then what we're going to do is we're going to lift up the board and we're going to check that these are all the way down and flush. And the reason we only did one leg instead of both is because now we can reheat the one leg we did, apply a little pressure to the top of the LED, and we'll get it nice and flat against the board. So we'll roll off. The side actually looks pretty good. I'm not going to reflow it. So then we can close out the blues and do the other side. And we'll nip these again. legs away in the little tiny crash can and then in the middle three and four are the green ones and same thing we're gonna make sure that the short leg and the flat spot go into the match up with the silk screen and flip little bend, another little bend, and let's go ahead and, and we'll do one leg there, one leg there, and then we'll just double check these as well. And we got there and there. Both look really good. So we'll go ahead and finish these guys up. Now with those done. Those right off and into the teeny tiny trash can. All right. And then last but not least, of course, we have our red LEDs. And generally the red one, by the time you get to the last ones, they should be pretty good because you're able to balance the board a bit better. But we'll go ahead and do those. And yeah, in theory, not so much in practice. So we'll go ahead and rework this one. There we go. Spin it around, check the other one. Okay, we're good. Let's go ahead and take these. All right. And fancy quick clip. Which will go to 
All right. So now, is there anybody who has not gotten through all six LEDs and all six resistors? Okay. Does anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns at this time? All right, so I'm going to continue on then. And next up on our agenda are the buttons. And where are my buttons? Oh, hi. <laughs> OK. All right, and just one quick second. I apparently misplaced my buttons which is good, which is okay. I've got a whole box of them. Not a big deal, just didn't have any sitting out. So two buttons, white cap, black cap, okay. So these are our buttons, they're 12 by 12 millimeter, nice and kicky. Um, they come with caps. The caps do just press on, um, but we are going to wait until we are done building to add those. So buttons can be a little tricky um, because they do want to kind of pressure fit in place. So what you want to do is you want to take one side and just kind of get it situated in the holes and then come around to the other side and do whatever you need to do as far as squeezing to get them all the way down and then snap back to the first side. I'll show that again because we have two buttons. And so first we just want to line up the one side then flip it over and kind of squeeze to get the other side in. So once you've squeezed, they're nice and tight. They're almost usable as is, because um, they do kind of pressure set themselves a little bit. So let's see if we can get a good angle to for the other camera. There we go. And then the only other thing you really need to know about the buttons right now is that they are a little bigger. We don't need to clip them because the ends are round. Um, they are going to take a little longer. I would give the, these guys a full one, two to heat up before you try to add any solder. Just because the pads are a little bigger, the holes are a little wider, and we're dealing with a little bit more metal to heat up before we do our buttons. But at least when we're, after we've soldered, I don't know, Stephen, would you prefer if I said momentary tack switch? Here's our lovely tactile buttons, all soldered up and ready to go. The clicky things, yes, we're, we're playing with the clicky things. The clicky things work as clicky things, even if we're not doing anything else and they make that satisfying clicky thing noise. So we're gonna leave the caps off. Um, 
just because as I found from the first build, because it had been a while since I had put one of these together, um, is that if we leave the caps off until the very, very end, we can balance the backside on the LEDs, which will be much more stable. All right, so next up, we are going to do our little OLED screens. Um, most of you should have, let me flip back here. Most of you should have gotten these little black ones. Um, they did run short and some of them were this blue color. Um, there's really no difference in the boards other than the fact that one of their engineers got created and was able to save themselves a couple millimeters of PCB. That's pretty much it as far as as far as components and how they function, they are identical. Um, I'm going to use the blue one just because I like the blue one. So these go, um, there's really only one way you can put these in. Um, pins at the top, make sure it's outlined with the silk screen. Then you've got the four pins that we'll solder in a second here. Um, these do not really lay flat. Um, mostly trying to keep our costs down um, so I didn't drill for um, any standoffs to make sure that they were flat. They'll sit at a little bit of an angle. That's fine. Fine, they're actually a little easier to read at a little bit of an angle. So let's go ahead and solder those. And as you can see what just happened, the pins dropped through, maybe, or maybe not. So the pins kind of dropped through, and that's okay. Um, mostly what we want to do is we want to get solder in one joint, just like that. And then much like when we reflowed the LEDs, we're going to go ahead and reflow that so that this plastic here is flat against the board. And then we can do the other three. So there, now it's flat against the board. And we'll go ahead and do the other three. And one. And iron's dirty. Clean the iron clean. All right. There we go. And there's two, and there's three, and those look pretty good. I'll just touch them up just a little bit here. Here, make sure all that solder's down in the hole. And then these little guys, we are going to go ahead and clip them. I like to clip them all at once. And I do put my hand over it because otherwise they will go flying. Oh, come on. Really, guys? Ow. All right, not today, apparently. So let's just one, two, ow. And four, okay. So we got those, that's done. So that takes care of the front side of our board. Um, you will notice that there are some holes or some pads that we didn't use. Um, Bigger, better. Let's see if we can get one in a. There. Um, so you are going to notice that there are some holes on the board. Um, they'll be labeled GP7, GP8, GP6, 7, and 8, and then a ground. Um, those are for if you want to add an extra something um, later on um, a buzzer, another, some NeoPixels. Um, whatever you can get away with with 
three pins and a ground, um, you can go for it. Um, you could just throw a couple of leads on there to say, pull it over to a breadboard. Um, but I did want to give you the option to, to expand on these guys a little bit. So now we are up to the backside. Now, before I go on, is there anybody who is not done with the front of their board? All right, let's go ahead and do a ready check. Let's see those K's, emojis, smiley faces. Pictures of your pets? No, I'm kidding. I don't think they allow that, but. Okay, we'll give Sherry a minute. That's not a problem. I can take a swig off this bottle of pop and. Go from there. Okay, so now we're going to flip the board over and we're gonna work from the back. Or we're gonna be placing stuff on the back, we'll be soldering on the front, whereas before we were placing stuff on the front and soldering on the back. So included in your kit was two sets of pin headers. These guys here with the single row of pins and then a row of holes they're the female pin headers. And then of course, these that are pins on both directions are considered the male headers. Um, you do have the option to just use the male headers. Um, you would stick them on, if you just stick on the male headers on like this, this, you're more than welcome to do that. However, when we get to the final step, your pot, your, your pie pico will be permanently attached to this board, unless you want to do a lot of really nasty desoldering. So we want to make our picos portable. Portable, we want you to be able to play with them or if you have another idea for a project, you can. Um, Although you probably don't need to, these are four bucks. Four bucks for genuine parts. We like that. So we're gonna start by putting the female pin headers, um, pins, pins to the board, um, pins to the board, holes sticking out, and we're just gonna do one for now. And right or left, it doesn't matter. And what we want to do is we're going to flip the board over very carefully and gently. And then much like we did for the LEDs and the screens, we're only going to do one pin. Because after we do the one pin, we're going to check from every angle and huh sorry about that buddy um these are going to be posted to youtube um it might take an extra day or two for mine because i know that 
Nicole likes to look at both and kind of cut together the better sections, um, mostly because, you know, speech impediment, but whatever. Uh, anyway, so yeah, um, if you don't get to it, um, that's fine. Um, do come to the sessions tomorrow where we'll talk about programming it. If you can hear me. Um, and we can, and there are, do, and there is documentation available on my blog at tech, uh, techgirlmn.com. Um, links should be in the chat. You might have to scroll back. Thank you, Sakura. You're awesome. Yes. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to finish up this row of pin headers. So as you can see, um, yeah, I was a little off. They're a little wobbly. And just like before, we're going to hold the thing down and reflow. And basically until you hear a click. And now we're going to check it again. As you can see, we're square there, we're square there, and we're square there. So then we're going to start at the opposite end, and we're just going to start doing these one by one. And I'll go ahead and throw you into the other view here for a minute. So you can kind of see that happening. And we'll do the light magnification here. We'll just keep going with the pin headers. And I did purposely put a lot of pin headers on here just to make sure that y'all got plenty of practice with your through hole soldering. So when all said and done, you're gonna have eight you will have done 80 of these pinhole joints. Can't say that you did not have adequate time to practice soldering. And we'll just keep going. You know it doesn't want to play anymore. And we'll clean the tip and start over. by one. Reworking these back and forth. We want to make sure that the hole is 100% filled and we've got just a little bit sticking out. If you've ever seen a bag of Hershey's Kisses, you'll know exactly what the shape I'm going for here. And so, with one side done, we can take a look here. Right, 
about this. Sometimes it is really, really hard to do things backwards. There we go. And don't mind me. Cameras are weird. All right. So there it is. There's one side done with 20 almost perfect little Hershey's kisses going. So now we can go on to the other side. And we're going to do it the exact same way. We're going to put in our row of pin headers. We're going to flip it over. We're going to go ahead and do just the one here at the bottom. sight in and make sure that it is square this way, square that way, and we're just going to double reflow it just to be sure while holding it down. And now we can go ahead and take care of the other side. One more one. I'm just gonna fill each one of these little header holes up. With solder. Now you may notice, um, especially here on the front where we're doing where we're doing these pin headers, is that you'll have like a residue that'll look either like wet or greasy. Um, what that is, is that there is um, rosin flux in the middle of your solder. And some of it has just spilled out. It didn't all burn off. Um, and that is entirely okay. Um, it is best if you get rid of it at some point. Um, my personal recommendation is going to be rubbing alcohol and either a paper towel or a coffee filter. Um, you want something that's not going to leave fibers behind, such as a cotton swab or, or a cotton ball. So yeah, paper towel, shop towel, um, coffee filters are good. You want something that's going to rip but not leave behind traces. Um, old toothbrush works well too. So there are our female headers all on and all ready to go. And now we're going to talk about the Pico. Let the Pico out of the little bag. Okay. So this is our Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, they are microcontrollers, not, not lightweight Linux systems, unlike the other versions of Pi's. Um, pies out there. Um, they did actually design their own chip for these guys um, and they are coming in um, retail for four dollars. If you go to Amazon or eBay and you see them for six, seven, eight dollars, um, take your time, wait, go to a uh, go to a reputable, reputable dealer, Digikey, Mauser, Adafruit, um, Pie Hut, etc, etc and make sure that you're not paying four dollars more than four dollars for these guys because that's all they should be um, they do have um, the fun i'm not even gonna say the word castle castellated english hard um, holes um, what that means is that i could have opted to put little pads on the back of the board and just surfaced and just done this as a surface mount unit um pin um through hole is a little easier for beginners, so that's why we did the, the way we did it. Um, so it also can make these guys a little challenging to solder, but that's okay. Um, so normally when we do um, pin headers, you'd put the little, the little end in here, and then 
Um, best practice says put this in a breadboard. Um, since I know not everybody's going to have an extra breadboard lying around, especially one that they might that might get hot and damaged. Um, I'm, that's the other reason we did the female headers. So if we take the male headers and we're going to actually hold them in place or use the female headers to hold the male headers in place, just like that. You want to make sure that they are safe, secure, and that you've used the long end into the uh, female edge out. Just hold a bit of a header out so you can see kind of what it would look like inside. <laughs> Yep. And now, if our female headers are correct and our male headers with a little wiggling, this guy should pop right on. But make sure that we are popped on according to the silk screen. The USB port, the mini USB port, um, should be pointed out. And these three extra um, pins that we that I didn't set up um, should be open towards the top and there we go yeah yeah I couldn't even afford to do it back then I remember paying 30 bucks for an Arduino and I thought it was the best day ever and now we're four bucks and <sighs> okay. Yeah, I know. All right, so let's go ahead and get these header pins so that we can actually get out on time. Because yay us. Okay. And don't mind me, I'm just playing with the camera or for the camera. And it's really hard because Hoppin puts in everything backwards. Oh, hi, Jenny. How are you? So does anybody have any other questions before we get this final step in? OK, hearing no questions, we'll move on to the last bit of soldering. Um, which is the pins for the Pico. Uh, they are gold plated, which is good on them. Um, but they do present an interesting challenge because there are little tiny things, little teeny tiny things in the middle here, which makes heat tricky. So what I have found is that we always want to have the, the iron to the outside when we do these these. And if you need to twist and, and turn your board to get it done, you, you twist and turn the board to get it done. So let's just go ahead. We'll do one. Should be good. We'll give it a quick peek. Yeah, we're still good. I'll maybe find a camera angle that works. There we go. Do some of these under magnification for you. And also when it comes to you, 
when it comes to these final sets of pins, it's not just you. They are a little more difficult than the ones we have been working on. Um, so just take your time and be patient. Um, if you have if you have soldered before or doing this with a parent who maybe has a lot of soldering equipment, um, ask them for some flux. It'll definitely help. So we'll just spin this around and do the opposite corner since we're lined up pretty good here. And that will be it once you have all of these done. You are done for the day. Um, in, the, in the sessions tomorrow, we'll go over how to get it to talk to your computer. Um, you don't need any, you don't need a special or specific um, IDE to program these, unlike, um, unlike say an Arduino or or something else. Um, else, um, they are. Um, I at least you can use two different forms of Python in them: Circuit Python and or Micro Python. Uh, we're going to be using Circuit Python just because I like. Just because um, Adafruit does a really, really good job of documenting their things. Um, so you don't really need anything special to program. You can program with these guys with Notepad, and then they will appear on your computer as a little tiny USB drive, which is really, really handy. So I'm going to let that go there and find out that I wasn't doing the right end because cameras are weird. Maybe we'll try this again with those. Um, I am going to link here in a second, a quick two session, second uh, question. Okay, I can't talk anymore tonight. A uh, two question survey regarding what kind of activities beyond a soldering blinky DIY badge you would all like to see next year, assuming we are in person. And even if we're not in person, um, I have a wide range of craft skills and I'm more than happy to branch out with our Maker Village options. So if y'all could hit me up and take the survey, I deeply appreciate it. It helps me plan, it helps me budget, it helps me decide which things need to have a sponsor sticker slapped on them so we can afford them. So please do take the survey. And I really gotta change out that hockey. All right. So mine's not 100% done, I'll finish it later. Um, but that's where we're going to leave it off tonight. Um, go ahead and add your buttons. And these are just bits of plastic. It doesn't matter if you want right on the right and, and black on the left or black on, or whichever. So that'll be it for today. <laughs> and if you all want to work ahead, um, here's the first blog post on it. And yeah, I really need to change that hotkey. Um, <laughs> I just totally lost my train of thought. It must be time to be done for the day. Um, anywho, um, blog, the code's there. Um, 
some links to some articles to help you get started are there. Um, if you can't make tomorrow's sessions or if you want, or if you're excited and want to work ahead, um, that's fine too. Um, I will, I did add a session that did not quite make it to sketch um, at, I think it's uh, three o'clock, three o'clock um, Pacific Daylight Time. Um, basically, I had some trouble getting some parts, um, but I did want to show you the parts so I could show you the different ways to make this thing portable. Um, so that will be all. So we'll have one single about half hour session of that at about 3 p.m. tomorrow. Um, is there any other questions? Anything else y'all want to talk about before I sign off for the night? All right, so it is whatever time it's supposed to be. Locally, it's 5 p.m. Um, I do want to thank our diamond sponsors, um, INEE Learn Security, and Oxus. If I'm mispronouncing that, I'm sorry. Um, Platinum and Gold, our Platinum and Gold sponsors, MongoDB, Jupiter Networks, Corelight, Google, and Bridge Crew. Um, so I will see you all tomorrow. Um, if you all follow me on Twitter, you know that I have a small little dog that would love my attention for a while this evening. So I will talk to you all, all tomorrow and you all have a good evening, okay?